Hello. Wake up, everybody. No more sleeping in bed. Yeah. Hey. Hi, everybody. Hi, Amari. Saucy Vocals. Takena Kendrick. So excited you guys are here this evening. Um, we're going to have a great conversation tonight with um, a wonderful singer. And um, in my mind, she's like BGV royalty. Um, she's just been um, a professional singer in, in the industry for, I feel like, ever since I knew anything about professional singing. So... I'm really excited to talk to um, Chelsea West, also known as Peaches West, and talk to her about um, her life and her career and her beginnings and how she got where she is. And um, you may you may or may not know her by name, but I promise you, you've heard her voice. You have heard um, the projects that she's done. So, come on in. Let's see. Hello, beautiful. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's so nice to be with you tonight. Thank you. It's so nice to finally meet you. And likewise. Oh, thank you. I I wanted to uh, speak to you. First of all, I've I feel like I've followed you for years because I've heard your name like at least 15, 20 years. And so to me, you're like an OG BGV, you know? <laughs> <laughs> before it was before it was cool to be a BGV, you were you were holding it down. And I feel like what you've done is really kind of shape a generation of of singers and what a sound sounds like. Does that make sense? Like how people create sounds yeah, I get what that makes sense creates mm -hmm. a signature bgv sound i feel like you've been part of so many signature sounds if that makes sense and I, I get it <laughs> yeah i'm glad you get it so that's why i wanted to talk to you i i highly respect um the work you've done and i feel like there's something in the water in texas you know i cannot <laughs> argue with that at all i cannot <laughs> Texans just do it better. Like, seriously. Like, there's great singers all over, but I just feel like Texas, there's just a sound that comes out of Texas. And so... It's hard to beat. It's hard to beat. <laughs> I'm so excited you're here. So, um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I do have some questions I wanted to ask. And then if people have any questions, you know, I would love for them to be able to ask you. Um, so, first of all, how is Atlanta? You know, <laughs> so far, so good. It is freezing like it snowed the other night. I was not prepared for that. I have not dealt with snowy weather in four years. So that was interesting. Like, wow, a real winter. Wow, okay. Well, so we um, come from LA, huh? Yeah, way, way, way different. But yeah, so far, I, um, so good. I'm from Fort Lauderdale, but I live in Atlanta. So I just happen okay. to not be in Atlanta. So I've been enjoying the 80 degree weather. For, for a little bit, but I'll be home and I'm pretty sure it's just going to be such a shock to my system. Oh yeah, it's cold. <laughs> so congratulations on your new home. Thank you so much. That's such a big deal. Thank I, you. I, you know, I'm a, you know, when you're, what is it called? When you're self-employed and you're, you know, in the arts. Oh my God. It can get very tricky. It, it can, can get, get very, very tricky. tricky. They want mm -hmm. they want blood at that point, you know. Pretty and, much. And you're firstborn for you to prove you can pay for that house. So yeah, that's a crazy. That's experience. such a huge milestone. So I wanted to start from the very beginning. My first, I guess, knowledge of you, I would say, would be God's property. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? So yes. from what I understand, your mother was the director of God's property. Not my mother. Not your mother. So who? Not my mother. However, the director was like another mother to me. Okay. Um, so, but not my mother. Um, she's this uh, a lady by the name of Linda Seawright. Okay. And at the time, um, she was in the same Kojic denomination as we were. So, you know, 
her son and her two daughters. Her son was a musician. Her two daughters sang. So Candy and I, like, connected with them growing up. So we always played together and sang together. Her son Spud was my mom's MD when he was 14. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we are like family, but that was the, the leader of God's Property. So was it, so God's Property was just a community choir of, yes. of kids and teenagers. Mm -hmm. So yes. was there something in particular that, that you remember? Okay, so when she created this group, um, did she have in mind that you guys were going to be recording projects and stuff? No. No, I don't think she, I don't think anybody thought that that was a possibility because everybody just did it for fun. It was just fun, but the choir was so good, it caught the attention of Kirk Franklin, who was in the neighboring city of Fort Worth. So he started inviting the choir to participate on recordings of his, and um, that led to him getting us the deal, him facilitating and helping the choir to get the deal. That is so cool. Have y'all sang soprano? I'm I'm assuming you're a soprano based <laughs> on what I've heard. <laughs> I am. And I, I have for the most part, except for when I was younger. Like when I was a kid growing up singing with my mom and my sister, she would make us sing all parts. So we had to sing tenor sometimes. We had to, you know, we had to switch parts. So I hated it at the time, but I'm grateful she did it now because I could sing anything. Yeah. Is your, do you guys pretty much have the same voice as your mom? Because you and your sister pretty much have the same voice. It's so similar. There are moments where it's just like, whoa, that was mama. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Because you know how yeah. the Pace sisters, they all mm -hmm. kind of like, it's like, wait, all of y'all sound the same. Like mama My mama's thing. thing is just different. Her thing is just a little, it's a little more special to me because she sounds a lot like Aretha. Um, so her thing is just a little different, but, um, there are those moments when we're singing, I'm like, whoa, we sound just like mama. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So let's talk about, um, what was your most, who was your most memorable client or your most memorable like experience? Like your most, is there a treasured experience that kind of turned a leaf for you or? A treasured experience. Wow. I will, I'll, honestly, Janet would have to be the treasured experience. You know, it's like, it's Janet Jackson. She's like a unicorn. Like, you don't just <laughs> sing with Janet Jackson. You know what I mean? Like, you don't just, she doesn't just know your name. So that was, that was probably a treasured experience. That's Michael Jackson's sister. That's as close as I will ever get to Michael Jackson, you know? So, yeah, that's special to me. Like, I'm, I'm super grateful I got that experience. So how, should I ask, how how did that happen? And what, what were rehearsals like? Did you guys have to do a lot of, so that was a residency in Vegas, correct? Mm -hmm. It was a residency yes. in Vegas. Was there a lot of dancing on your part involved? Like, yes. in the show, like, on, like on yes, the we show? had moments. We had moments um, where we were in the show with her, like front of stage with her in it, you know, which was like, whoa, this is Janet Jackson. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah, so, the, you know, the show kind of evolved around. So there were moments we were in it. There were moments you could see us up in our tower. There were moments we were behind stage. There were moments we were on the side of the stage, you know. So our positions varied. But there was dancing and, and, and action involved. Did you know that when you, when you signed up? I pretty much assumed it would be that way because it's Janet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whenever, whenever I audition for something, if they say dance is involved, I just, I suddenly can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew up cheering and Candy and I used to make up routines in the living room. So dancing has always been a thing for me on the side. Like when I was a little girl, I wanted to be an MC Hammer dancer, period. Like when they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I wanted to be a, a hammer dancer. Like I wanted That's to dance crazy. Dance. That was actually one of the questions I was going to ask you. If it, if, if it weren't music, what would you do? It would have probably been dance if I had taken it more serious when I was younger. Or I would have been a, um, a journalist. I um, used to do journalism writing in high school. And my teacher started putting me in competition secretly. I wouldn't know where I was going. And she'd be like, I signed you up for this competition. Lady, you got to tell me that. I don't know Definitely. if I can do this. But yeah, it would either be dancing or uh, journalism. Wow. Wow. So um, Kanye West, you, you were part of the first 
I would say draft yes. of singers. You, yes. you like you established the whole yes. Kanye West Sunday service. What was I mean, the whole thing was honestly special. It is just a kind of a special, unique moment in history. But what for you being on the inside of that? What was that like? You know, so there's some things you really cannot prepare for or preconceive. You know, like there's some things that you can think like, oh, doing that would maybe be cool. But there's some things that happened that you couldn't have even imagined that was a possibility. That was that. You know what I mean? That experience Same. was mm -hmm. one of those. I never knew something like this was even possible. And having been there from the beginning to see every phase and transition and change, you know, the <laughs> so many different eras in a short amount of time, I feel like we experienced. I feel very blessed. I feel very honored. Um, Mr. West is a brilliant man. You know, he has a very beautiful mind. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes we find ourselves in situations like, you want me to do what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to go where and do what? But, mm -hmm. you know, we trust the vision and we go with it and it usually turns out to be fire. So it's been beautiful. I love the choir. The choir, I see some of them have logged in. Let me tell you something. I will fight for a sample, okay? I love each and every person in the choir, past or present. Um, they have literally become like family to me. We have spent a lot of time together. We have shared experiences that people could only dream of. And I'm just grateful for each and every person from Jason to Nikki to Jonathan to Steve and Jawan and so on and so forth. Like, it is beautiful. And I feel very blessed to have shared these experiences with these people. That's so amazing. What are some, where are some places that you guys went? How, okay, so let me ask you this. How did y'all come up with those arrangements? Um, we have a creative team that consists of Nikki Greer, who does all of the rewrites, and um, her partner's Jason White, of course. He's kind of like the musical mastermind. Mm -hmm. And then you have Steve and Jawan, and they kind of handle the arrangements. Nikki does the writing, and they come with these incredible rewrites that blow our minds every week. That is so amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. What, what, did you have like eight hour rehearsals? Were they like full days? You just, you just, you know, whatever happens, happens. You just, you know, it could be one thing and thing right. turn into a totally different thing. So you, you just have to be, big. that's an environment that requires flexibility. Okay. So that leads me to this. Being a, what what do you consider yourself? Because I I look at you and I'm like she's a professional BGB. But what do you? What are your titles to you? First of all, I still want those makeup lessons. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna have to get back into my groove of it all. But I got you, girl. I got you. <laughs> okay, I got you. Uh, what was the question? One more time. Oh, my question was. What are what are a lot of the things that you do? Like what is oh, your what title is, like, you do? My title for my honestly, I don't title myself as any I don't know. It's a strange thing. Like Do you I praise and worship at a church? No. I so don't you do consider that. yourself a praise and worship leader. Oh no, that's not me. That's not Are you sister. a choir director? Oh, no. Are you a teacher? Mm -hmm. Are you an entrepreneur? More along those lines. Musically um with the with the whole ministry as far as leading praise and worship i've just never ever done that you know what i mean like i've been in choirs but the forefront in church like that's never really been my thing that's been candy i take the back seat you got that girl mm -hmm. i'll see y'all at the house of blues for this rb concert mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what i mean that's mm -hmm. that's me okay so what are some of the what are the like I said, you, you, you've been around a long time and you've kind of been trained in this singing, recording, professional space. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure you've seen a lot of people come and go yes. as far as singers. Yeah. What, what are some of, I wrote down, what are the three biggest mistakes that you see aspiring BGVs make? Ooh, that's a really, really good question. Um, three mistakes I see aspiring BGVs make. 
Um, one being unprepared, Ooh. not taking advantage of your time at home to learn your material. Um, showing up to rehearsal completely unprepared is like a huge, huge no-no, especially if you got the music beforehand, like show up ready, you know, because nine times out of 10 things may change, but it leaves a very good impression on the people you're working with and for when you came in the game on your stuff, you know what I mean? Um, I would think number two would be not being timely. You know, being on time is a thing. And a lot of people are not good with that. They show up late with a bunch of excuses and time is money. Time is money. Be on time. The third thing, and I would want to say most important thing is not being likable. Because listen, people want to work with people that they like. And if they don't like you, it doesn't matter how good you are. They will choose somebody that's less talented than you that whose personality fits the environment. You know what I mean? So attitude, my mom used to always tell us growing up that your attitude can take you places that sometimes your talents, your looks, your skills cannot. You know, if people like you and just genuinely enjoy you, you will really kind of not have any issues because people always kind of look out. You know, a lot of my opportunities came from people just looking out. Like, I've never, I haven't done a bunch of auditions. The ones I have done, I didn't book those jobs. Um, people have just kind of been like, hey, can you do this? Hey, can you do that? And I show up ready to rock and roll. And, you know, it leaves a good impression. And I'm cool and I'm easy to work with. And I go with the flow. And I know how to, you know, because things happen. You know how to adjust. I know how to adjust because things happen and sometimes things get really crazy and people want to know how you can handle rough times and tough moments, you know, but I've learned that, you know, not everybody has what it takes to, to really make it in this regard. I, I, um, I, I, I'm an artist and I book for, uh, what do they call them? Corporate gigs. Mm -hmm. And you hit the nail on the head because there are certain singers that I just don't want to call because I just don't want to deal with their attitude. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's like, if that's the only soprano available, I book an alto. <laughs> like, it, just, it just comes down to that. Like, I can't deal with her right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, because it's just that serious. Because imagine if you refer somebody that goes to the job cutting up, then that's a poor reflection on you. You know, so... You have to be mindful on who you sit and wear because it all falls back on you at the end of the day. Like, you brought them here. This was your suggestion. Did you know they were going to raise hell like this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a thing, you know, and it happens. Yeah. And, it happens. And, and the other thing is, um, there's a couple things I wanted to say. Number two, the double whammy of being late and being unprepared. <laughs> Mm -mm. Mm -mm. it's like you just really you just don't want any treat you really should treat every gig like it's an audition for the next gig is that absolutely it? treat every one. gig like it's your dream gig you know what i mean because i feel like you know if you're not faithful over the little things you won't be faithful over the big things and that applies to every aspect of your life you know mm -hmm. be faithful with your little car until you get the car of your dreams keep it clean you know what i mean like Keep it taken care of. Make sure that, the, you know, the check engine light ain't on and all of those things so God can trust you with more. That's how it works. When you can trust you to be a good steward over the small opportunities, he can trust you to be a good steward over the big ones, you know. So um, don't despise little opportunities. And when they come, don't treat them like they're little. Treat them like they're big until the big ones come. You know, because that's how it happens. Yeah, and the only way you can really treat something, um, I, I think it, it really boils down to integrity. Don't agree to something that you're not going to fully commit to. Absolutely. Right? But sometimes I feel like people don't really know what they're signing up for singing BGVs. I think they just look at it and they see the people's energy and the performances and it looks like a really good time, which it is. But it is still very much so a job. And it's work. And it's sometimes the work is hard, a lot harder than the average person could imagine, you know, but it's a lot that comes along with it. It's not just a good time. It's not. And I just, that's just me being completely honest. It's not just a good time. It's, it hard, is. it's hard work because you're dealing with, first of all, you're, you're dealing, 
you're not necessarily in control of everything. You have to stay flexible. Um, you're kind of subject to whoever the artist is, however they feel, if they're tired, if they're this, you don't know what they're going to change. And you don't know, you know, regardless of how much you've studied, you got to stay flexible and you got to keep a good attitude. I think that's important. I I did a, I did a gig. Um, you may know Jasmine Crumley. I do. I just became acquainted with her um, recently, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lovely. And um, I did, I did a gig with her and I learned so much. I don't, I'm not really in the BGV world like that. Mm -hmm. And so when I do work with her, I watch, I watch her and I, it's like, I learned so much from her because we did a gig and um, they wanted, they only had a few in-ears and she had left her in-ears in the car. And she really wanted to go to the car to get her in-ears. <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> the producer just handed her some in-ears. And she was like, oh, OK. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. She was like, she just took a deep breath. And she adjusted. And she went, OK. And I was just like, wow. And you keep it moving. Brilliant. And you keep it moving because yeah, that's what you I just learned so to do. It's like I learned. I, I'm. I call her name because I was. I, I was saying it as a compliment. Like the way that she handles every professional situation. It's just like wow. And this is why she's always booked. She is just so pleasant, and she knows how to adjust. Even if it's like what how I feel doesn't matter. We got to get the job done. It makes a difference. I'm telling you. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Um, as a last minute gigs like hey are you available to sing at 10 o'clock tonight and you know you're tired and your voice is kind of tired do you agree to it anyway typically yes and I regret it <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to stop saying yes to things because it stresses me out but I do it anyway and I figure it out but every time every time I put myself in situations like why would you do this why would you do this to yourself? But I make it out okay most times. So, yeah, I, I say yes. But you know what? There's not a lot of of great sopranos. And I think what makes your voice really amazing is you have, you obviously have the high belts, but it's warm. It's like very pleasant and very sweet. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I can see why people want you because it's not like, like, if they only had one soprano, they don't have to balance, okay, well, she's a shrieky soprano, so now we got to get a richer soprano. You're kind of like that blend of both types of sopranos. So I could see why you would just work every time. Thank you. I've been fortunate. I've been trained by some of the best. My mother did not play no games. Miss Linda Seawright, she played no games. Before the choir got signed, um, the choir sang all sorts of genres of music, jazz, classical, um, you name it, the choir sang it, which is what gave the choir the, the nudge, uh, you know, above a lot of the other community choirs in the, in the choir because we could sing anything, you know what I mean? So I grew up listening to everything. And my mother, like I said, she was a stickler, find your note, stay on your note, you know what I mean? So... I feel very blessed and fortunate in that. It's, first of all, let me just say that the fact that we're even having this conversation blows my mind a little bit because there was a time I legit felt invisible. You know what I mean? So it's like to see the tables turn, it's like, whoa, people see me. That's crazy. <laughs> We've been <Yeah>. seeing you. <laughs> I'm still like in awe of that. Whenever somebody reaches out, like I want an interview, I want to talk to you, I'll be like, wow, me? Wow, that's dope. Okay, well, let's do it. Your voice is amazing. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I may accidentally confuse you with your sister. So did you sing BGV's on Marvin Sapp's album? We both did. So it was both of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. See what I yeah. mean? Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, the vocals on the you. album were brilliant. Thank you. Thank did you, you very much. Did you do multiple Marvin Sapp albums? I did. I have done all of Marvin's records. So you um, were on the other one from like 2003 honestly, or four. The last, maybe. Now his new, new one, I did not sing on that one. The yeah. choir had me tied up. So, you know, I my, couldn't get home for that one. My favorite recording of Marvin Sapp, I want to say it was like his old three or old four album. 
Now we didn't do that one. We started doing his records in 07. So okay. from Thirsty on. Yes. Okay. 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 Yeah, mm -hmm. but those were amazing too. They were oh, good records. Amazing. And a lot of those, quite a few of those albums, I sang soprano by myself. See what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll just put Chelsea on that. That bounce, bounce herself out. <laughs> I love it. I was gonna, I was gonna say, how do you take care of of your voice? What do you do? What are certain? Do you do you kind of have a regimen? I drink a lot of tea when I know I have to do a lot of singing, and it's so funny. I laugh about it now. Growing up, I used to see my mom with her um, thermoses, and she would have her fresh ginger and her tea, and I would be like, girl. What are you doing? You know, in my mind, I'll be like, you doing? is that really necessary? And now, look, I, you cannot beat me with some ginger and some tea and the whole shebang. So whenever I know I have a lot of singing to do, I'll drink a lot of tea. I'll eat a lot of ginger. Um, and I sleep. I go to sleep. Listen, I tell people all the time. First of all, Deanna Dixon is on hey, here. Hey, Deanna, girl. <laughs> um... I I have gotten so ridiculous with my ginger at this point. Ginger tea bags are not enough. Like I just literally take the powdered ginger and put some sugar and just hot water. Like that's how insane I am. Have you had the ginger crystals? No, I don't. Oh want girl, it. it's literally just ginger powder. Like to the point where I'm sneezing. You gotta get so the ginger crystals. I gotta find them. I'm gonna find them for you. Don't worry. Okay. Wow. But it, what it does, because I, at this point, I'm, I'm teaching like 10 clients a day. So mm -hmm. I'm just downing ginger all day just because it controls inflammation. Because mm -hmm. I'm talking all day. And Have you tried ginger candy? Yeah. I love ginger anything. I'll eat ginger anything. Ginger bread, ginger cookies. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, you should stock up on all ginger products. Get you some ginger candy. Get the um, ginger crystals. First of all, those are going to rock your world, okay? Okay. That makes a very good ginger beverage. Listen, I'm I'm Jamaican. So oh, sweet. We do ginger. I love it. <laughs> I ordered uh, Jamaican food tonight, and I, the fruit punch I got had ginger in it, and I was so happy. I was Absolutely. Like, got ginger. Absolutely. We put ginger in everything. We put ginger I love in stew beef, everything. I love it. I love ginger. I have oh, well, love girl, we can rock. So, 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 and sleep is very important. I always say there's, a, you cannot, you cannot hydrate to the point that you overcome the lack of sleep. You know right. what I mean? If you haven't slept, your voice is just going to go kaput really quickly. Yeah, it's not going to work the way it's intended to. I love that. I love that. So, so you're very just kind of homeopathic. You don't, you don't do any... When I say homeopathic, you know how they kind of package things for singers? Right. Throw yeah, I'm a simple girl. Either I got it or I don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I typically know what I have, and I'm going to give you what I got. And we... <laughs> um, like I said, I'm simple. I, um, I do my teas and I rest, but I don't have, like, an extreme regimen or anything like that. And then on top of so, so you must just be really gifted as well. Well, so your voice has a lot of, you just generally have a lot of stamina in your upper range. Like you don't get tired easily. Honestly, I have found a safe place in my mix to where it doesn't hurt. Is that right? I don't feel like I'm straining or I'm pushing as much. I can't explain how to get to it or where it is, but somehow I found it and I thank God for it because it has given me stamina. So you know, if I if I really don't have it, I have a strong fall. So you really kind of can't tell. Come on and tell the secrets. Those are my little secrets. Okay. You know, you said your mom sounds like Aretha. And what you just said is exactly what I hear every time I hear Aretha. Is she belting or is she in a mix? It's a strong mix. I love it. Mm -hmm. Well, good for you. Thank you. <laughs> everybody everybody can't do that. Like, if I could, then I would do that, too. I would like to put me on soprano all day because... You know, what? When, when I'm most grateful for it is when I have to sing with Jennifer Hudson because, baby, 
Woo wee. That's a high surprise. See, thing. here's the thing. You don't really you don't post your gigs like that. Like you're okay. not that's not how so I didn't really know all everybody. I can only go off of like I've been Facebook friends with you for a few years. So okay. I've seen a few things that you posted and so I kinda gathered some information. But a Google search ain't gonna pull up nothing on you as far uh -uh. as who your clients are. So I was like, I don't really know if I should just ask her <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. I uh, I just I've I've been trying to figure it out, you know, within myself. Like, why don't you post more of what you're doing and what you got going on? And I think for me, I want people to know me for me. I want people to like me for me and not what I do or what I can do, you know. Because yes, I sing, and yes, technically I am a singer, but that's not who I am. I love that. You know, so I try to keep the two separate. I don't. I don't ever want to lose my personal identity to my gift. And I feel like a lot of people sometimes don't know who they are outside of their gifts. Absolutely. So I don't ever want to confuse the two because I'm still an individual with multi-purposes outside of what my voice can do. So come on now, talk, talk to me about Jennifer Hudson. I love Jennifer Hudson. So when you're singing BGVs for her, the note that she's singing, is that alto for her? And then you have to sing above her? Sometimes, Ooh. sometimes, so sometimes she'll do like a Whitney melody, uh, medley, and uh, you know, Whitney songs were high, and it's like uh, a thing. So I have wherever she is, I have to, I have to go up, uh, and she, you know, I'm gonna do what I got to do. Wow, so can you? I hate to ask you to do this because I don't want to embarrass you, but who else have you sung for? Oh, girl, uh. Five people. Five people. Okay. Okay. How about half and half? Like, I'll give you gospel people, and I'll give you the other people. That's fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, on the gospel side, you have your Kirk Franklin. You have Tamala Mann, Marvin Stapp, Israel Holden, um... I didn't know that. that. Did I say Fred Hammond? You were in New Breed? I was not in New Breed, okay. but I did some vocals on his last, his latest uh, Road to Damascus. I did some vocals for that. Got it. Um, so I think that's five on the gospel side. On the other side, um, well, <laughs> I can't. You're funny, the other blank. people, the other side. I did a, I did a song on um, Celine Dion's record. Um, Snoop, Two Chains, uh, Brandy. Um, what? Snark? I don't know. It's been. I'm not even. And this feels so weird to say because people who know me know that this is not like I'm not a pump myself up. I You're not. not that's that. why I was nervous to even but ask because I was. Like, I have I really like don't know, but I'm scared to ask. <laughs> my resume is. Sometimes I can't believe it, to be honest. You know what I mean? Like, you really did that? <laughs> like, you really work with this person or that person? It's, it, it is, it's mind-blowing for me. You know, it, it's extensive. I feel very, very blessed. So, Brandy, who else? Because I cut you off. But I was at my five. Oh, where'd you at your five? I think. I thought you were at, like, three. And I think I'm at my five. You just don't want to talk no more. <laughs> you said <laughs> you said Snoop, Two Chains, Brand. I did. I did. Um, Tiny Desk with Lucky Day, um, Snarky Puppy, and Lay. Okay, okay. Here's a fun fact. I won a Grammy with Snarky Puppy and Layla Hathaway. What? I love it. You're you're just so you're just so low key. Fun fact. <laughs> And honestly, it's a crazy thing, but um, I got, oh, Tori Kelly. I forgot. I love Tori Kelly. I remember I that. You Kelly. did her gospel record. Uh-huh. I, I, I remember her. that. Wow. Yeah. It was so good. Um, when the year we got nominated for that Grammy, because they've gotten nominated for several more since then, um, I had to give up my seat because I couldn't afford to get there. And I had too much pride to ask for help. You see that? 
Cool, cool, cool. So is that where that comes in of you feeling invisible? No, that was just just that was just during a time of my life where I was just struggling. I didn't have a lot, you know. So opportunities weren't that frequent at that time. That okay. was during the time I was just like, is this really gonna work for me? Because hmm, nothing's happening. Um, so it's like the little engine that could, you know what I mean? Like I would get a, you know, an artist here and an artist there. And with each artist, I would meet more people and, you know, I would get another, you know, so like I said, it was just a slow, it wasn't anything that just happened overnight. Cause mind you guys, property was a very long time ago. So it's been one heck of a uphill journey since then. Yeah. So how, what does life look like for you? So, I mean, here in the South, we have Publix. So you're, in, <laughs> you're, you're in Publix, you're picking up your ginger candy, and you get a text that, you know, oh, Tori Kelly needs some singers. Can you be at the studio? Then nine times out of ten, I'm going to hop on a plane and get to the studio. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'm just saying, but that's literally how your, how your life works. It's that like, is literally. Because you're a sister have a yeah, I am a mom, um, and before we moved into our home, um, my sister's house was like my interim space, so that's where my son set up, that's where I was, boom, boom. So we had this thing, like, when I left for one trip, I never knew where I was going to end up, so I would leave and fly to L.A. and think, oh, I'm just going to L.A. to do X, Y, and Z, then I would get a, a call, and I would literally end up in Chicago, or end up in, you know, like, and that happened several times. One weekend, I was supposed to go to Austin, and we ended up in Tahiti. <laughs> so oh I've God. never known. It's the, it's a crazy life, but I literally never know where I'm going to end up. So I kind of have to always be ready for anything. What are some, have you ever, I'm sure you have, you, um, thought about how you can capitalize on all of your experiences? I know you said you don't want to really do the teaching route. But have you ever thought of writing about it or doing some sort of entrepreneurial thing? You know, I'm really trying to figure that out. I don't, maybe when you say teaching, maybe I need to explore that a bit more. I do realize that I have a gift of motivation simply because I've overcome the things that I've overcome. Um, and I just feel like if it happened for me, it could happen for anybody. And I'm, I'm really trying to dig into that, like, how can I make all of this make sense? Um, I think also, to be completely honest, I take for granted my experiences. You know what I mean? It's like things that I've done, and I know they're a big deal, but I don't rest in the fact that they're a big deal. You know? Mm -hmm. And I know that if I could, there are people who could benefit from the things that I know. I just haven't figured out how to make it make sense in that way. Yeah. I think you're, I, I, you know, your voice is a gold mine. Obviously, it's it's carried you to the whole world. First of all, before I finish that thought, have you ever been to New Zealand? I have not, but I have been to Australia. Okay, because that's like my goal place is New Zealand. New Zealand is <laughs> for sure on the list. The <laughs> <laughs> right. That's on the list for sure. I, I want to see New Zealand. Yeah, I do. I was I was gonna say your voice is a gold mine, and I feel like at this point, with the amount of experience you have and staying power that you've had, and you're so grounded, I just think you're so endearing to so so many people would just love to just eat out of your hand. I can tell you that for sure. Whatever you do, it will be noticed, and it will be very um appreciated by the music community you've contributed so much thank you well if there's anyone who is business savvy who would like to help me and assist me set up a plan of action to make all this make sense i am down to listen and learn and partner um because i'm not i'm not the type of person to think i know it all or think i can do it all and probably my lack of thinking that i can keeps me from doing a lot of things <laughs> you know what i mean just I'm one of those type of people, it's interesting, that I don't really know what I can do till I do it. It's like, oh, I can do that. Yes, it's a weird, you can. It's, it's a really, really strange thing.
But um, when it comes to business, I don't, I know I'm not the most business savvy with putting things together and, you know, making outlines and things make sense. Like, that's not my strong suit. So I would absolutely need help, but I'm open to that. So. Yeah, you'd be dope. When you said journalism, I mean, that's just, that's amazing. True. People have, you know, I've thought about writing books um, or a book or, you know, letting the journey lead itself. Um, it's just how, you know, when you're considering embarking upon a territory that you don't know anything about, it's completely unfamiliar. It's not sing this, you know, it's write this, which isn't hard. It's the structure and things of that nature. Um, but I'm definitely open to that as well. That's kind of been a, a, a desire for quite some time that I probably just need to put real energy into. Okay, so before I let you go, I want to know if anybody has questions. They're just they're just basically expressing their love for us, and I love you guys too. Um, you said some amazing things today. That thank you. Um, yeah, especially somebody even said the small beginnings. That's so important, you know. Listen. Don't don't treat don't treat the the nobodies like they're nobody. You show up and make them feel like a somebody, you know. Um, and do your job well. Treat them Indeed. like you can treat the Janet Jackson gig, and that's how that's you, right. you know. That's how you secure stuff like that. Somebody said, "I love you." Oh my gosh, Bay Turner, this dude right here. When I tell you, sing, Let sing things up down. Bay Turner, I'm not even lying to you. Bay Turner, I'm, I was blown away. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any questions, somebody said this is an awesome interview. Thank you. Thank guys. you so much. You're so Thank lovely. You. you really are. I don't think anybody has any questions. I just think they're like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a question to pop up. Let's see. Oh, that's a good question. Oh, what is next? Honestly, I'm here because God told me to move here and I I live my life by faith. You know, it's a really crazy life, but that's how I live it. And uh, when I moved to L.A. four years ago, I had no idea how that was going to work out. And that move literally changed my life. Um, so with this move, it's kind of me being in that position all over again, but on a different level. You know what I mean? Like I started that journey sleeping on somebody's couch. You know, not knowing what that life was going to be. And I'm starting this journey <laughs> in, a, in a whole house. Um, but still, I don't know exactly. what this journey will be. But um, I just trust God to make it make sense. And we're going to see. It's a surprise for everybody. We'll see what's next when it happens. <laughs> I cannot, I can't get over how much you sound like Beyonce. First of all, <laughs> I wish I had a dollar for every time I hear that because it is uncanny how much you sound like her the whole time you've been talking I'm like serious <laughs> I hear that a lot I don't I don't get it I don't hear it but I've heard that before I love it well I want to say thank you so much I will let you get your rest um thank you so much for speaking with me tonight no you problem. are just thank you absolutely lovely and um, hopefully we'll keep in touch. Please do. We're neighbors. Um, I have enjoyed you. I love your spirit. And thank I just you. thank you for this opportunity to share whatever it is I have to share with whoever is willing to listen. So thank you. Okay. Well, you have a lovely night. You too. Good night, everybody. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.